to have you with me again. We are continuing with our series, The Character of God, and this will be the third in the series. Let's have a quick word of prayer. Father, I thank you again for your goodness. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your Holy Spirit who leads us into truth. Your Holy Spirit who teaches us about Jesus and takes what from him and reveals it to us. I pray that as we go through this word today that you would open up the eyes of our understanding and give us revelation in the knowledge of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Right, we're going to have a look through the book of Genesis and we're going to see various um, revelations of God's character. The first word that we find in um, in Genesis is L, E-L. And L means strength. And it speaks specifically of the Almighty. So you will hear words like Elohim, El Shaddai, El Rohi. Now, L is Almighty, All Powerful, El. The word for God in Hebrew is Eloah, Eloah. So El Eloah is God or Almighty God, Almighty God. And we are introduced to the Almighty God in Genesis 1 verse 1, where it says, In the beginning, Elohim, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. And so God created the heavens and the earth, and his name there is Elohim. Now, the interesting thing about Elohim, it speaks of plurality. So although God is one, there's a plurality of persons or personalities within the Godhead. So God, in the plural form, created the heavens and the earth. Now, this is difficult to understand with the natural mind. But the scriptures, as we begin to study the scriptures, we find that God revealed himself as a three-part being or a tripart being. And he is a the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is how we've come to know him as God the Father or the initiator, the one with the vision, the, 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 the great designer. Then we've come to know him as God the Word, the expression of God. He's the one that we see, the one that we 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 could we could touch the one who who reveals the, the the radiance of the unseen god and then there's the god who we call holy spirit he is still he's part of the singular godhead he is part of one god but he is the the spirit of god so i like to use the the analogy of when i speak you see i formulate a thought in my mind and that thought becomes a picture. So if I say to you, a red house, what is the thing that you see in your mind? I've created something inside your mind. But how did I create that in your mind? I created it by my words. So as you heard my words, my words went to work through your eardrums in your brain and it created a red house. Now, how was that word carried to you? It was carried to you on the wind or the breath that came out of my mouth. And so it was carried on the airwaves, it came to your eardrums, your eardrums interpreted the message, sent it to your brain, and you saw a red house. Now, God the Father is the initiator, he's the Father. Out of his bosom comes the Son, the Word of God, and it's through the Word that all things were created. You'll see that in Genesis. And all things are created by the Word through the power of the Holy Spirit. So the triune Godhead works as one. They are one, but there's three distinct personalities or attributes to this wonderful God that we serve. And we find this in Genesis 1 verses 26 to 28. It says, And then God, after creating the world and the universes and everything that's in it, it says that, then God says, then Elohim said, let us, plural, let us make man in our image and our likeness. So God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit took counsel together and said, let us make man in our image, that is the way that we are, and in our likeness, that is to have our, our attributes, our character. So God created man and he said, um, and then he said, let them, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the heavens, over the livestock, over all the earth and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. 
So God created man in his singular image. In the image of God, he created him. And then we see he created male and female. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the heavens, over every living thing that moves on the earth. So we see that God, who is a triune being, created man a triune being. In the book of Thessalonians, Paul tells us that we are a spirit with a soul and a body. So we are a triune being. So God created us in his image, triune being, and in his likeness. Our souls, our minds, our wills, and our emotions were created to be like God in every way. So in other words, we were to be holy, to be pure, to be righteous, to be filled with the joy of the Lord, to be filled with peace. There was no fear, no anxiety, no anger, no sin, no revenge, no hurt. Our, our character was godlike, and our, our, our physical attributes, our spirit, soul, and body was godlike. We were created in his image and his likeness. Are we gods? No, we are not in the class of God, but we were created in his image and likeness. And why did he create mankind? He created mankind to have dominion, in other words, to rule, to take responsibility over the earth and everything that is in it. So God created us to be, um, what's the word, to, to have responsibility, to be lords, small l, lords over the earth and to take care of everything on this earth. So he gave us responsibility and authority and he gave us power to do that as lords over this earth. So we see God's purpose in creating man. The second word that we find when God created man is the word Yahweh. Now, this wasn't Adam writing, writing the record of, of Genesis. This was Moses writing the record of, of Genesis. And so he brought in his understanding of God. And the Lord had revealed to, to Moses that he is Yahweh, the great I am the covenant-making God. And when God deals with man, as he dealt with Israel, he revealed himself as a covenant God, a God who cares and loves. He is merciful and kind, but he is righteous and holy at the same time. And so we find Moses writing and he says, and the Lord God, Yahweh Elohim, formed man of the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living soul a living soul so the soul of man is what god wanted to be dominant his connection with god was his spirit and his soul was there, there was no corruption or perversion in his soul he was holy pure righteous and his his imagination was so creative that he could name all the animals on the earth and remember them so god created man to be a living soul to be created uh, to be creative and to be dominated by a soul that is totally in tune with god and the spiritual realm so verse 8 says and god planted a garden in eden garden in eden in the east and there he put man whom he had formed so god the loving god yahweh created man because he wanted children so yahweh is the redemptive and covenant name of god revealing the special relationship between humanity and his creator elohim the almighty god created the universe and all things but when it comes to man he reveals himself as El, as yahweh elohim the redeeming covenant God who is full of love, loving kindness and his loving kindness is from everlasting to everlasting. The next revelation that we have of God is El Yonai, El Yonai. And this we find in Genesis 14 verses 18 to 19. It says, Melchizedek, the king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was priest of the Most High God. And he blessed Abraham and he said to him, Blessed be Abraham by God Most High, by Elohim, El Yonai. El, El Yonai. El, El Yonai. So <clears throat> this man's revelation, his personal revelation, is that there is no God, no idol, nothing that is worshipped, no authority, no king who is higher than God. Elohim is El Yonai, the supreme highest authority in all the universe. The next revelation or the sixth revelation that we, we find in the book of Genesis is El Roi, El Roi. And Roi means sight, to see. 
to be aware of, to see. In Genesis 16 verses 13 and 14, we find Hagar, the servant of, of Sarah, who's gone through a tough time and had been rejected. She ran away from, from home. So she, the Lord came to her and the Lord spoke to her and the Lord encouraged her and told her to go back to her mistress. And in Genesis 16, it says, She called the name of the Lord who spoke to her, You are the God of seeing. You are El Rohi. Why? Because you see me. Truly here I have seen him who looks after me. What a beautiful revelation this woman had. She'd gone through such a tough time. Your heart goes out to her when you read of what happened to her. And yet she discovered that there's someone who looks after her. His name is Elohim, El Eloa, El Shaddai, El Yonah, and she discovered him as your El Roi, the God who sees me, the God who takes care of me, the God who looks after me. Hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful? The seventh name that we find in the book of Genesis is El Shaddai. Now this is the name that God spoke to Abraham and said, I am, I am El Shaddai. So the Lord introduced himself to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob as El Shaddai and they knew him as El Shaddai. Um, and the word El Shaddai means almighty, the almighty God, the all sufficient one. There's nothing too difficult for our God. In Genesis 17 verse 1 it says, Abraham, when he was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said to him, I am God Almighty, I am Al Shaddai, walk before me and be blameless. So he's saying to this 99 year old man, the promise that I gave to you 25 years ago is going to come to pass. Now that it's absolutely impossible for you to have children or for Sarah to have children, I'm going to do something that is going to be remarkable. It's going to be a sign and a wonder. It's going to be a miracle. It's going to be something along the lines of the birth of my son that will come in about 2000 years time. It'll be a miraculous birth. But this over here is you are going to be rejuvenated and between you and Sarah both of you will be revived your bodies will be rejuvenated and you will have a son there is nothing impossible for me why because I am El Shaddai I am the all-sufficient one and we can come to know him as El Shaddai the all-sufficient one he is more than enough hallelujah Hallelujah. He is the one who fulfills and brings about fruit, the one who is just, the one who purifies and corrects us, the one for whom everything is possible. There's no one like him. There's no one beside him. He is the only true God. He is all sufficient. And the last one we're going to look at today is El Olam. El Olam. And El Olam speaks of everlasting, eternal, never ending. And it says in Genesis 21 verse 33, Abraham had a revelation of God. It says he planted a tamarisk tree in Beersheba and called there on the name of the Lord. So he called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting hallelujah. He called on Al Olam. He says, you the everlasting God. I've been here for a hundred years and yet you are from everlasting to everlasting. You know the beginning from the end. You are outside of this time zone. And he worshiped God as the everlasting God. And we need to understand that God is the everlasting God. He holds us in his hands. He holds our families in his hands. He knows our beginnings and our ends. He knows our inner thoughts. He knows what we're going through. He knows our victories and he knows our losses. And he's there. He's always with us. And when we begin to understand that he is the everlasting God, he's the supreme God, he's the almighty God, he's the creator God. He is the God who is more than enough. He is the God who sees us and he knows us intimately, that we can trust him implicitly, that as we walk with him, as we come to know him and we dwell on these attributes of his character, we find that we have a father who loves us. We have the son who died and redeemed deemed us and reconciled us to the Father and we have the Holy Spirit who is constantly teaching us, drawing us and, and, and giving us insight and revelation into this relationship that we have with Almighty God. God bless you. We'll um, get back again soon. <music>